hello hi i think we're we're, we're on we're, we're, we're on, on air and it's dark and spooky because we just had halloween pumpkin carving Ooh. so we have some of our artwork right here so people who can view us on youtube can see what it looks like <laughs> <laughs> you can check out the youtube link yeah or your previous video where we were carving yes how are other things going you made this Good. excellent warm apple cider we for have us. Warm apple cider. Uh, it is November. It sure is. <laughs> yeah. Things have cooled off. We um, have another surprise partnership event with Wizards Unite going to libraries, but we were not successful earlier today. Yeah. But we did get an excellent breakfast with a pumpkin pie latte that I am it was fantastic. obsessed with. Yeah. It was so good. It was. Tasted. It was very It was good. like perfect sweet and, you know, coffee morning, excellent time. Yeah. Highly recommend. I don't know. I've been obsessed with pumpkin things lately. Pumpkin bagels. Perfect sweet coffee morning. Excellent time. <laughs> and usually, that's my band name. Yeah. Yeah. I'm usually not into like the whole, oh, fall pumpkins. Like I don't really care. But this yeah. fall I've been consuming pumpkin products. I approve. Yeah. They, they, they really fit. I mean, the weather is so clearly like a nice fall here. Yeah. Like we sure. were out and about today. And when we left, which was pretty early, it was probably 55, mm -hmm. maybe colder. When By the time we were coming home, which was a little like noon, mm -hmm. it was like 75. Yeah. Which is like, oh, well, super <laughs> nice. I'm like ready to take off my sweatshirt. Yeah, for sure. Another week ahead, but uh, for now, yeah, to the book. Yeah, let's get All into this. All right, let's do it. Wands so one's ready. Uh, everyone should turn to page 180, Quidditch. Today's lesson is called Seek and Ye Shall Find. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> we'll start with the synopsis. <laughs> the chapter starts with our trio getting used to winter at Hogwarts and Harry getting ready for his first Quidditch match against Slytherin House. Harry's nerves are calmed slightly by Quidditch Through the Ages, a book recommended by Hermione, but Professor Snape confiscates it from Harry. When Harry asks for his book back, he finds Snape having his leg tended by Filch while complaining about the three-headed dog. This, along with Hermione and Ron seeing Snape mutter a spell as Harry's broomstick malfunctions, cause, cause him to pile suspicion on Snape. The spell breaks in time for Harry to catch the snitch in his mouth and win the match for Gryffindor. Later, our trio visits Hagrid, who denies their claims of Snape's nefariousness, while revealing that the three-headed dog, Fluffy, belongs to him, and more importantly, guards something connected to Professor Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel. Mm. There you have it. We're getting into it. We're, yeah. getting, we're getting deep into the title we're, of this book. Oh, sorry, Winnie. I think I kicked him. He's okay, though. Um... Yeah, when we were driving around earlier this week and trying to, for whatever reason, we hadn't looked at what the next chapter was and we were trying to figure out, like, what what is it that comes next exactly? And I think I was one chapter too far. I, I kind of missed this one. Yeah. But it's a big one. It, the chapter starts, as they entered November, the weather turned very cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I pulled that quote out because it's like, <laughs> it is getting cold here. Not as cold as where they are, where there's frost and things, but... They should get Much some warm apple cider. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Okay, so we're looking at seek and you shall find. Yeah, yeah. I mean, very connected to Quidditch. A seeker. Harry is the seeker. He, they've been trying to keep it under wraps, uh, but people know that he's the seeker yeah. for the Gryffindor team. Also, okay, so the first Quidditch match of the season is Gryffindor versus Slytherin. Like, I mean, I know there's only four houses, but like, <laughs> don't you build up to the rivalry? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the thing. I guess a few weeks before the Thanksgiving game, Gryffindor-Slytherin rivalry game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that made me laugh a lot. Um, well, so I was thinking about Harry going to see Snape. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the sense of like, Harry wants very badly to find Snape uh, out. 
mm-hmm. to, to figure out, to prove that Snape is really a bad guy. No, like entirely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Already. I mean, that's what I was thinking about is he, 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 of course he confirms it. Like we have this confirmation of what he expects to find. Mm-hmm. And he has convinced uh, Hermione. Ron has been on board, it seems like, for a little while, trying to convince Hagrid. Mm-hmm. He is recruiting, in some ways, people to judge and uh, be suspicious of Snape. Yeah. I mean, it kind of goes with like the so the the metaphor of like a golden snitch. Like, like his job is to search for this and like during the course of the game like he thinks he sees something golden but it's actually the watch and so yeah but this idea of like you you see what you want to see maybe i don't know is that kind of like what you're thinking yeah that was what i was thinking yeah yeah for sure i mean he views himself i feel like harry views himself as um i don't know somehow uniquely capable even though he he doesn't necessarily come off as particularly egotistical, I like what you've said about bringing it into the metaphor of of the sport here, where like a lot is going on and a lot of people are doing a lot of things, but somehow Harry is able, like a seeker, to like fly above all of it and cut through all the chaos to find this like one gem mm-hmm. of information, which is that mm. you know despite all the professors being you know capable they don't notice that snape is uh you know trying to get in there Mm -hmm. past fluffy past the trapdoor yeah it's just a quite fascinating chapter to me like harry's relationship with snape has been somewhat one-sided right Mm -hmm. he's taken a lot of abuse from him and now harry is saying well the reason he's abusing me (laughs) to some extent is because he is you know doing this bad yeah mama jama yeah. Yeah, yeah well it's also interesting um to think about like hermione's stance on the situation so mm. now the, we have our trio we with her solidified they're friends <laughs> they that hang trio. out hermione checks ron and harry's homework because <laughs> that's what she does <laughs> but ron and harry like talking to her about it and she's kind of like yeah no that's ridiculous at first and Ron's like, oh, you think every teacher here is a saint or mm. whatever it is that he says, <laughs> like mm. um, classic Hermione. But then in the course of during the match when Harry's broomstick is going crazy um, and Hagrid's like, oh, dark magic. Yeah, mm. something dark magic. And then Hermione, or Hermione takes the binoculars and is like, oh, I'm going to look I'm going to look for Snape and see what's that happening because that idea was already planted in her mind and even though she was resistant to it she also I mean Harry and Ron are her new friends and she trusts them and like they went through the whole troll fiasco together mm-hmm. and so it's kind of like maybe if I see something maybe if I see Snape like I'm going to just look even though I think it might be ridiculous I'm just going to that's the first thing she does is she looks for Snape and sure mm-hmm. enough she sees him moving his mouth and is like, whoa. And then all together is like, okay, Snape is, this is, this is validated. Let's go with this theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's easier to fit evidence to, you know, to your suspect. Mm -hmm. Once you have somebody that you're suspecting of doing something wrong. Yeah. You know, everything that, everything now that she sees is kind of tinted by Harry's suspicion of Snape. Mm-hmm. But I love just we can go lighter for a second. The whole camaraderie of the team, like again, Fred and George are just great characters. They have so few lines, but every one of their lines, their interactions with Harry are just so great. I, I don't mm-hmm. know. There's something very grounding about them. The way that they see things, the way that they do things. The first time we meet them, what do they do? They come and help Harry put stuff on the train just because, right? Just because they do. So for all their mischief and all this, like they just have a sensibility about them. Like Oliver obviously is the prototypical like psychopathic uh, sports maniac. He's intense. Very intense. Like we have to win. I love, I didn't write it as my quote, but when he says like, 
or else with his yeah, eyes. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> but like Fred and George, who take Quidditch as seriously probably as Oliver does, uh, are able to like maintain their levity in the moment. And they're just like, yeah, we heard the speech last year. <laughs> like We heard it. It's yeah. the same. It's always the same. Like yeah. this is who he is. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, Harry, you know. Yeah. And uh, so speaking of another trio, we have Fred and George and Lee Jordan, Lee, yeah. who was, was mentioned in a previous chapter um, in the context of Fred and George were out to search. The, I mean, the three of them are searching for secret passageways in Hogwarts. Yeah. And so they're kind of like a little trio themselves. And Lee Jordan, 10 of 10 for his commentator <laughs> skills. That was the quote oh that I did gosh. write. Did you write the same one? Um, the Flint? Flint nearly kills the Gryffindor yes, Seeker, yes, which I, could happen to anyone, I'm sure. Yeah, because it's this... Well, I wrote the sequence of what he says. So the first attempt is he's like, after that obvious and disgusting big uh, bit of cheating, and <laughs> <laughs> McGonagall's like calling him out like, okay, stop being biased. And then he's like, I mean, after that open and revolting foul, <laughs> try again. <laughs> I love it because he's like... <laughs> it's like a headline too. It's like, Flint nearly kills the Gryffindor Seeker. Which could happen to anyone, I'm sure. <laughs> so a penalty to Griffin. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's oh a great. Gosh, it's I mean, perfect. I'm trying to write. I can't tell you how difficult it is to put humor into text form. Like mm. it's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how she does it so well. Like there's always there, there's like one a chapter, one every other chapter where just like this line of it's like ah, oh, it's perfect. Builds mm -hmm. to it. It's funny flows it's not like out of the nowhere yeah Great. and i think the commentator role especially because i mean i <laughs> do not watch uh sports as much as i used to but i do get annoyed with some of the you know standard <laughs> commentator type like where it's it's not it's it's very sterile or like yeah. kind of like whatever. no bill walton <laughs> yeah no bill walton i will watch <laughs> yeah, even he's though something it's else. just kind of it's else. it's less about what's happening in the game and more yeah just let's learn about bill walton's life the world yeah <laughs> yeah perspective um and a little easter egg actually hmm. for wizards unite fans mm -hmm. uh i think i don't know i don't know if you read it this way but uh this is on page 181 the day before Harry's first Quidditch match, the three of them were out in the freezing courtyard during break, and she had conjured them up a bright blue fire that could be carried around in a jam jar. And that fire comes around again when she sets Snape on fire. Yeah. It's blue. Yeah. But we have young Her or is it young Hermione? Or is it? No, it's Quidditch fan Hermione. Quidditch fan Hermione, fan Hermione, Hermione with the blue with flame. With the blue flames. We have talked Remember, about we this. Remember, like, like, why is, is it blue? blue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nailed I think yeah, I that think it's so. from this chapter because also looking at who's in it. So you have, I mean, uh, Quidditch Luna is not in this chapter, but right. uh, you do have uh, Neville and you have you have Hermione and you have um, the Quidditch pitch stands and or the the Gryffindor banner. So I think it's it might not be specifically from this first match, but it's like Gryffindor Quidditch fan club sort of. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was wondering if that was. The fire confoundable was I her love boot, that. blue I like flame. it very much. Yeah. yeah. Here's something interesting. This has always stuck out to me, and I, I'm not sure that it's true. We can put it to our listeners to find out mm -hmm. if it's not, but I'm pretty sure that in this chapter is the only time where we get kind of a scene or a part of a scene that isn't Harry in the third person narrator. Right when he's up in the air, there is a scene between Hagrid, Ron, and Hermione, mm -hmm. not Harry. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure any any I think as we go on in the later books, I'm pretty sure anything like that would have still been from Harry's perspective in the moment. It would have been like he saw like out of the corner of his eye Hermione and Ron sneaking away with a jar of blue flame like it would have been mm -hmm. from his perspective and it's always stuck out to me i could be wrong but it's something that has always stuck out to me that in this book she does a for just that split second a different perspective i think everything else is yeah here. yeah no yeah. you're right yeah interesting yeah so if anyone knows yeah i mean if there are other instances maybe we'll pay attention in this book um yeah i, I, I will I definitely know, yeah. be paying attention it's a it's an interesting thing yeah for sure. Okay, so we learn about Fluffy. <laughs> Get that name. The Fluffmeister. Oh my goodness. And Dumbledore. Of course, Dumbledore's involved. Yep. 
and this Nicholas Flamel. I just keep thinking of like Hagrid's, shouldn't have said that. <laughs> little catchphrase. Where is Dumbledore? Do we hear about him not being at the Quidditch match? Nope. No. He's not mentioned, except just... for at the end when Hagrid's talking about him. Right, right. Yeah. Hmm. Right. I always find that interesting. Mm-hmm. Where is he? Well, where is he like most of the time? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he just <laughs> We know that he's important. He's very in and out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like start to get the sense it, it's almost if this were my first read through, it's almost like, Oh, he's not that important of a character. Yeah, like, he just, he's like, just a peripheral authority yeah, figure. Yeah, he's you know? just the the headmaster. Obviously it's still a bit early, but he doesn't teach any classes. He has right. had no interactions with Harry at mm-hmm. all. He sat up, I guess, when Harry got called for the uh, Yeah, sorting. but that's like, you know, traditional, oh, he just shows up because he's like the yeah. headmaster and I yeah. don't see you. It's again. interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. All right. Are you ready to learn about Quidditch? Oh, always. <laughs> yeah. So I do have Quidditch Through the Ages, um, mm-hmm. which I have been browsing through. Um, let's see. What, are, what do I want to start with? So some rules for Quidditch. I guess I'll start there. We have... The rules were set by the Department of Magical Games and Sports upon its formation in 1750. So Mm. there's no limit imposed on the height to which a player may rise during the game, but you have to not stray over the boundary of, you know, like the oval, Mm. uh, the lines of the pitch. Um, And if you do fly over the boundary, then your team must surrender the quaffle to the opposing team. The captain made call for timeout. And the, this is the only time players' feet are allowed to touch the ground during a match. Mm. Timeout may be extended to a two-hour period if the game has lasted more than 12 hours. Harry was trying to, <laughs> it, it crossed his mind to get Wood to call a timeout, but right. he couldn't get the room right, to go right. over there. Well, there was like so much, like yeah. he could not move. It was possessed. Um, the referee may award penalties against a team. Uh, and so that happens mm-hmm. during the course of the match. It's like a free shot in mm-hmm. the in the ball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The quaffle may be taken from another player's grasp, but you can't um, seize the hold of, of another part of a player's anatomy. So that's not allowed. Okay. But you can just take the quaffle. Um, in the case of injury, no substitution of players will take place. <laughs> the team will play on without the injured player. Mm. All right, number six, I found pretty interesting wands may be taken onto the pitch but must under no circumstances whatsoever be used and there's a little footnote here that the right to carry a wand at all times was established by the international confederation of wizards in 1692 when muggle persecution was at its height and the wizards were planning their retreat into hiding Interesting. So it's like the Second Amendment of uh, yeah, I know, right? wizarding law. I mean, I would not want to put my... I mean, I would be afraid to break my wand if I were playing Quidditch, like someone bumps into me and my wand sure, snaps. Sure, yeah. You can take that. the wand on to the Very field. interesting. Mm. And then... You can't use it. Yeah, exactly. Number <laughs> seven, a game of Quidditch ends only when the golden snitch has been caught or by mutual consent of the two team captains. Mm. So this is where... All the stuff about golden snitches. Where does that come from? Where does that idea come from? Uh, the golden snitch that we see in modern Quidditch was actually, previously, a golden snidget, which is a, a creature. Um, really? Yes. Yeah, it was oh, a real creature. My. Okay. And in the early 1100s... There was some activism mm-hmm. probably done. Snidget hunting was popular among many witches and wizards. Uh, so like hunting snidgets that for sport, True. but the snidget, so they, uh, if you imagine the snitch, but as an actual bird, like it, it moves, it's like sporadic, it's fast, sure, and it's like sure. gold. And, um, so that people were like, Oh, this is like it's kind of an fun. accomplishment. <laughs> like I caught the snidget. And, uh, unfortunately the snidgets were often crushed by people who <laughs> tried to <laughs> capture them. <them. laughs> and so it That's became hilarious. an issue, of course. Um, and so because snidget hunting was so popular among witches and wizards, uh, there was also an increase in muggle broomstick sighting because people would mm. go out of lengths to try to catch these snidgets. <laughs> so in the year 1269, chief of the wizards council, Barbarous Bragg, attended a Quidditch match and told players he would award 
150 galleons, which, okay, that's 1269 in the year 1269. It's equivalent to over a million galleons mm. in today's currency, which is crazy. Uh, to the player who caught a snidget that he brought with him to this match. You're telling me the wizarding world has inflation? <laughs> yeah, That's supposedly. Astonishing. It was in All the right. footnote of this book, so that I'm going to believe the history of it. <laughs> so uh, brought this snidget to the game and was like, I'll give whoever 150 galleons, whoever catches this. And then that sparked the beginning of using actual snidgets in Quidditch matches. Mm which uh, that created a player called, they called it, not the seeker, but the hunter. Sure. (laughs) And the role was to catch the snidget. And instead of 150 galleons, because that's, I mean, it was probably not likely that he would actually pay up 150 galleons anyway, but that's where the 150 points comes from, is that history. Um, So I went to... That's awesome. Fantastic Beast and Weird Find Them by Mr. Tell Nick me there's Scamander. an entry. There is an entry for oh. a Snidget. Yes, there is. All right, so the Ministry of Magic classification is four. And it's wow. classified as four, not because it's dangerous, but because severe penalties are attached to its capture or injury. So mm-hmm. it's a higher you know, level. It's protected. It's protected. So the Golden Snidget is an extremely rare protected species of bird. Yeah, so... I didn't finish the story, obviously. Um, during the course of like snidgets, actual snidgets being used in Quidditch matches, then there is this sort of activism to protect the species. And uh, yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. oh my gosh, poor snidgets. Completely round with a very long thin beak and glistening jewel-like red eyes, the golden snidget is an extremely fast flyer that can change direction with uncanny speed and skill owing to the rotational joints of its wings. The feathers and eyes are so highly prized that it was at one time in danger of being hunted to extinction by wizards. The problems we create, man. Right. (laughs) The danger was recognized in time and the species protected, the most notable factor being the substitution of the golden snitch for the snidget in the game of Quidditch and snidget sanctuaries. (laughs) Snidget sanctuaries exist worldwide. Magical theory, muggle problems. Exactly. So the Snidget became a protected series, and this wizard named Bowman Wright of Godric's Hollow invented it. Um, he was a metal charmer and created a ball that mimicked the behavior and flight patterns of the Snidget. And that's where we have Quidditch today. If it weren't for this guy, that's I don't know what would happen to the game of fantastic Quidditch. Fantastic information. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, for sure. That's great. The Snidget. Yeah, a little Snidget. Now protected, because... Wizards be cray. <laughs> there is a sense to me, uh, I'll go again, writer. Mm-hmm. So there's a concept of kind of the iceberg of the universe where like what do readers see and what is actually there and how deep is the universe actually going? Mm-hmm. This seems like the kind of thing that JK Rowling was able to retcon in such a creative way. Yeah. Right. She like, maybe she had this idea of like, oh, the snitch will kind of be like a bird. And then that, this yeah, is just me like, completely speculating, like, but where, like where then when she got from? to this, yeah. right, she'd mm-hmm, be like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. And she's just so good at that. Mm-hmm. She's so good at it. Obviously, yeah. she does it in the main canon, but in that stuff too, it just yeah, it went so, across two so books. Good. I know. They, I know. It, it cited the other book. It cited Quidditch Through Her the Ages. world <laughs> building is just <laughs> yes, fantastic. Yeah. And the, it just benefits so, so much because it's kind of set in this world so she's Mm -hmm. able to kind of write analogs into the wizarding world yeah like on earth yeah oh what are our what are human problems well we overhunt things right exactly bingo yeah you know very good well now when i see the snitch in wizards unite the golden snitch i won't be so angry i'll be like at least it's not a thank you whatever the wizard's name (laughs) was barbara or whatever (laughs) No, that was that was the other uh, guy. Uh, Bowman Wright. Bowman Wright. Snaps to Bowman Wright. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you have other quotes? I didn't have other quotes. I mean, I really enjoyed reading Lee Jordan because I also, in my head, was like, I was hearing the music of the movies. I was like feeling that excitement, and I was just like, yeah, this is. I can I can see the silliness of this. Mm-hmm. Nice. It's a good chapter. Yeah. How are you feeling moving on? Like, what? How's your 
your mystery. She's Good. she's this the chapters of book one especially like follow a pretty mm-hmm. obvious pattern. Right. And Hagrid. Well, <laughs> Anytime Hagrid ends a chapter, it's a yeah. You get something. a little bit of information, <laughs> yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Snape setup was right there at the beginning. Like it was, it was. It's we're gonna continue this thread and see where. I mean, they're now they're like, okay, we have a name, Nicholas Wamel, mm. and you know these people. Well, at least Hermione, she she knows how to use her resources. We're probably going to the library. We sure are where all the <laughs> students go yes. in Wizards Unite. <laughs> yeah, check out your library, library week. Well, awesome. That's it. That's it that I had. Did, yeah, same. I mean, you brought the house down again. Excellent research. Yeah, I love learning about Quidditch. I mean, I have not actually gone through the whole book, so if you have Quidditch through the ages like and find little fun tidbits that are related, I'd also love to know those little pieces. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of history there. Yeah, for sure. I don't know how many chapters we have left, but it can't be Ooh. that many. Six, maybe. Yeah. Seven. And then we'll keep going with chapter. Well, we'll do a review, like the whole book, live yeah, stream. Yeah, po- probably live stream, maybe Q&A yeah. type thing. Mm-hmm. And then we'll go on to chapter two. Keep going. Book two. Oh, sorry. Chapter two. Book two. Yeah, yeah. we're going to go back to chapter <laughs> yeah. two. We're going to re-pick. It's going to spiral. Okay, great. All right. Well, until next time. Until next time. Wands ready. ready.